So probably the most complicated of these theorists or child and adolescent developmental theorists are Eric Erikson. And Eric Erikson presented an epigenetic model of development. And it went not only for children or the development of, say, infants to adolescents, it went until from birth to old age, so it covered the entire lifespan. And one way of scoring a few points on your exam is simply knowing that it's called the epigenetic model of development. So that will, that will help you score some points right off the bat. And the epigenetic model holds that there's actually eight stages of the life cycle, which and each stage is essentially sequential and relies on the previous stage or successful completion of the previous stage to move on to the next stage. And if a stage is not complete or unresolved, then there'll be issues that will continue to arise and cause problems in subsequent stages. So he believed you needed to go through each of these stages essentially sequential in a sequential fashion and that completion of one stage relied on the successful completion of the next stage. With that said, what are the stages in his epigenetic model of development? Well, the first stage is trust versus mistrust, and that goes from birth to one year. The key event during this first stage is feeding, and a basic sense of trust actually develops through attachment and forms between the child and the parent who provides consistent care. Mistrust can arise if the infant cannot rely on the parent for basic care, which leads to feelings of emptiness and despair. So for each one of these stages, I would say the highest yield information to know is first, you want to connect Erickson's name with these stages, and then you want to know what each, what each stage is, a little bit about each stage, and the time frame with which the stage should be occurring. So tr you want to know, say, stage one, trust versus mistrust. You want to know that it occurs from birth to one year and the key events are surrounding feeding, and it revolves around attachment that forms between parent and child, and that mistrust can arise if they can't rely on the parents. So it's basic care. In stage two, autonomy versus shame and doubt, one to three years of age, the key event is toilet training. So in some ways, similar to Freud's uh, anal phase, and likewise, stage one, trust versus mistrust, somewhat similar to Freud's um, oral phase. But anyway, back to stage two, autonomy versus shame and doubt, one to three years of age, key event, toilet training. The trust developed in that first stage gives the child the freedom to explore and separate from the primary caregiver for a brief time without significant distress. And if they, are, or if they have unfulfilled or unresolved issues from the first stage, then this could lead to shame and doubt, which occurs when the child is required to perform but cannot. In stage three, initiative first guilt, that's from three to six years of age. The key event is exploration. The children begin asserting them, asserting control and power over the environment. And if they have success in this stage, it leads to a sense of purpose. And children who try to exert too much power, though, can experience disapproval, disapproval, and that disapproval can result in a sense of guilt. In the fourth stage, industry versus inferiority, that occurs from 6 to 11 years of age. The key event is school. Children now need to cope with the new social and academic demands. Success leads to a sense of confidence, while failure results in inferiority. In stage 5, identity versus role confusion. In ages 12, it goes from ages 12 to 18. The key event is social relationships. So teens need to develop a sense of self and personal identity. Success leads to the ability to stay true to yourself, while failure leads to role confusion and a weak sense of self. In stage 6, intimacy versus isolation, ages 19 to 40, the key event is relationships. Chill, young adults need to form intimate, loving relationships with other people, and success leads to strong relationships while failure results in loneliness and isolation. In stage 7, we have generativity versus stagnation. That's ages 40 to 65, and the key events are work and parenthood. So adults are trying to create or nurture things that will outlast them. They're essentially trying to create a legacy, often having children or creating positive changes that benefit other people. So what they're trying to do is leave some kind of legacy, and that legacy can be left in multiple ways. One can be through children. Another possibility is to create positive changes in the world, like maybe some product you create or 
maybe some charity you fund, it changes the entire world. Success leads to feelings of usefulness and accomplishment, while failure results in shallow involvement in the world. In stage eight, we have ego integrity versus despair. The key event is reflection on life. Older adults need to look back on their life and they need to feel a sense of fulfillment. They need to feel like their life had meaning. Success at this stage leads to feelings of wisdom, while failure can result in bitterness and despair.